It's the one that we've all been waiting for. We finally got our hands on this year's best of the best OLED TVs. The Sony A95L versus the LG G3. One QD OLED, one MLA OLED, and only one top spot to be claimed. But with over a thousand pound price difference, the verdict might not be as obvious as it first appears. Now, specs can tell you a lot, but if you're looking to buy either of these TVs, it's the side-by-sides that you guys need to see. All coming up. Hey guys, Louis from Smart Home Sounds here and welcome to our 2023 Clash of the Titans. The Sony A95L finally landed in the studio a few weeks ago, so I've been really busy putting it to the test. But we've actually decided to share this head-to-head -head comparison with the G3 first, rather than an in-depth review, as it seems like the most highly requested video right now. So hopefully you guys appreciate the advice. Now, both TVs have been given the title of TV of the year by multiple reviewers, so I think it's really important to kick this off with three warnings. Number one, neither of these TVs are perfect, as you'll soon see. Both are brilliant, but both still have their drawbacks. Number two, we are talking about flagship, top of the range models from these brands, and there are still great options that sit just below these that might well be worth considering for your space and budget. And finally, number three, different people have different priorities when it comes to TVs. So what might be a winner for me might not be the case for you. Now, in my review of the LG G3, I happily admitted it was the best TV that I had reviewed yet, but I did hold off on saying it was my pick of the year because I knew that we still had one big TV to drop, the A95L. Now, Sony TVs do tend to carry more of a premium than LG, so I was expecting a higher price point, but I think the A95L releasing so much later in the year has led to a much bigger difference in price than I anticipated. So for context, Context, the 65 inch LG G3 at the time of reviewing is currently available for £2,299. Now, the 65 inch Sony A95L, meanwhile, is coming in at £3,499. So, we're actually looking at a difference of over £1,000, making the A95L over 50% more expensive. In fact, you can actually pick up a 77 inch G3 for £3,799. And for anyone looking for bigger, only the G3 goes up to the larger size of 83 inch. Now, I'll come back to value for money later in the review, but for now, now, let's take a look at how these TVs compare. I'm just going to get it out in the open right now. The Sony A95L is everything that I was expecting it to be based on Sony's previous A95K and the upgrades included this year. Now it is a stunning TV, making the most of QD OLED technology and a second gen panel from Samsung Display, which when you add Sony's picture processing on top, gives us very impressive color accuracy and vibrance. Now there's also a heat dissipation layer in this TV too, which is then enhanced by advanced thermal analysis done by Sony's Cognitive XR processor. And that all means that the TV can go brighter and that it does. Of course, LG decided to go for a different route for their premium OLED and have backed MLA technology in their G3 alongside their Alpha 9 AI sixth gen processor. Now, micro lens array technology maximizes the brightness output of the panel without needing to use extra power, but instead improving the efficiency of the OLED pixels. And this all means that the G3 is the brightest OLED LG have created. And as you'll see throughout this review, still the brightest OLED that we've tested. Now, for most of our comparisons, we left both of the TVs in their standard mode. So the Sony A95L as a master series TV offers brilliant performance straight out of the box. And for most people, it can be left as it is and deliver a great performance. Now, the LG G3, as I did say in my in-depth review, benefits from a few tweaks and or a proper calibration, but that's not gonna be realistic for everyone. So we will also include some footage of both TVs in their optimized or most accurate picture mode. So filmmaker mode on the LG and professional mode on the Sony. So during our testing here in the studio, there have been times where I've preferred the picture quality out of the G3 and others where I've preferred the overall image from the Sony A95L. So first things first, I wanna show you guys a couple of different landscape scenes to hopefully talk you through some of the differences that I'm noticing during our testing. So you will notice with the G3, it does offer overall a much brighter image, especially with this scene here. And as a result of that, we're noticing more details, especially in the shadowier, more darker areas of the image in comparison to the Sony A95L. So if I was to come in and do a blind test, then I'd definitely be more drawn to the G3. But if we take a look at this scene here, I prefer the overall picture quality out of the Sony A95L for a couple of reasons. So first of all, I'm noticing that in comparison to the G3, we are getting slightly better contrast ratios and that helps to deliver a more punchier image. And we are noticing a little bit more detail, especially in the foreground of these rock formations. Now, if we take a closer look at the G3, again, we're getting a nice and bright image, but it's not quite as contrasty or as punchy. And we are slightly losing that 3D depth effect. Now, you guys know that I don't tend to delve too deep 
into the nitty gritty, leaving that for the more technical review channels. And instead, I prefer to give you guys real life examples that you would see day to day. But I do know that some of you will want to know the specs when it comes to nit rates. So the LG G3 is capable of getting up to a whopping 2,040 nits, whereas the A95L peaks at around about 1,350 nits. But of course, peak brightness doesn't tell the full picture. So from real world testing, the LG G3 does give an overall brighter picture and that instantly drew us to that TV first. Now you'll notice that any white text is much brighter and also the white home screens do appear brighter too. However, when you look closer, the Sony gives a better balance and overall contrast, making highlights seem brighter. Color brightness on the A95L is also very impressive. It also felt like we therefore got more realistic shadows and darker areas on the Sony for a more true to life picture. And in a lot of our testing scenes, we retain slightly more detail in the brighter areas on the A95L. But for those who prefer to see everything, then more details were visible in darker scenes on the G3 due to the overall brighter picture. When it comes to colors and color accuracy, there is no contest. The A95L shines in this area. Now it's not to say that the G3 is bad, it's still brilliant, but side by side, there's no denying that the A95L takes the win there. And I think that comes down to both the QD OLED technology and Sony's image processing. Now, one thing we also noticed with the G3 is that there were times when the colors lost their saturation in brighter scenes. Now, again, it's worth noting that with some calibration, you might find that you can get the colors on the G3 closer to the A95L. And when both are in their accurate picture mode, the overall image and colors are much closer. So I've got another example from the movie Encanto here for you guys, and I hope this translates across on camera. So if we start by taking a look at the G3, I really wanna focus, again, on the brighter parts of the image. So I wanna focus on her white top here. Now you'll notice on the G3, in comparison to the Sony A95L, that the top is a lot brighter. And naturally, that draws me into the image. And then you start noticing things like other details, especially then if we start focusing on the darker parts of the image. So we can see here, like the details in her hair. In comparison to the a 95 hour where we don't quite pick out as much. Again, if we take this clip from Encanto, we can see that the black seem a little bit more pure black on the Sony, whereas the overall brighter picture of the G3 lets us spot some of the details in the darker areas. Now, that's not to say that the Sony blacks are crushing, it just comes down to which you feel is more accurate. Now you can also see here what I meant about the highlights seeming brighter on the A95L, making the candle appear almost 3D on this TV. Now I think that comes down to the better contrast and darks on the Sony, as I said, allowing the highlights to stand out more. Now I just want to show you how you can make these TVs look very similar with their different modes. So if we take this clip from Mission Impossible, we can see that if I now flick them into their respective accurate modes, just how similar the picture becomes. The brightness in particular makes these images seem much more on a similar level. If we skip forward and find another clip, we can see here that there is still slightly better contrast on the A95L, which helps to retain better details. And again, the colors on the skin are a little bit more true to life, but we are getting really, really picky here. Now I would say that the Sony nails what we would call cinematic accuracy, where it feels like you're watching the scene as intended with real life colors and impressive details. Again, this is another place where the A95L shines, the details. Across almost every scene that we've tested, the A95L held on to an impressive level of detail, taking that true to life picture even further. Take this still from Mission Impossible, for example. The skin tone seems more realistic and the details in the hand are a step above those on the G3. But if the A95L wasn't here, I'd still think that the G3 performed brilliantly in this area. And this is why a lot of these comparisons come down to really fine margins. But once you've seen them side by side, it's hard not to be drawn to the sharper, more refined image of the A95L. Now you can also pick up on the differences in brightness and contrast between both TVs. And I think which you prefer will come down to personal preference. But for me, the more accurate picture is the A95L. Sony's superior image processing also helps the A95L with low bitrate content such as live TV or even a YouTube video. Now LG's upscaling algorithm also does a good job with non-4K content, though I would say from our testing, the Sony gave an overall more detailed picture with upscaled content. Motion, again, is handled very well by both TVs. So if I show you a clip here, you should be able to see that there is next to no judder and both are solid options if you watch a lot of sports or fast-paced action movies. You can also get into the settings of both TVs to improve performance. Now we've also tested a lot of sport on these TVs as well and I would say that both are perfectly capable options with no real negatives to highlight from my testing. Now overall for sports, the brighter picture of the G3 helps you pay attention to the whole image so that might be something to consider. 
I also tested both TVs out for off-axis viewing and both were great with no loss of contrast or saturation. Now one difference I did notice which is important for some is that the G3 seems to handle reflections a little bit better than the A95L and when both are turned off the LG is more of a pure black screen whereas the Sony seems more off black and almost dark grey. Now for me, both TVs offer a superior picture quality and both can be tweaked to improve performance further. Now often we are talking about fine margins between the two TVs, but after watching over a longer period of time and once you've gotten over the initial brightness of the G3, I really appreciated the color accuracy and details on the A95L more. Now I think that the G3 might be a preferable viewing experience for many, while the A95L retains the more accurate picture in terms of colors, details and depth. Now, one thing that I've not mentioned yet is the design of these TVs. Both are premium models in terms of the build quality and materials used, and both offer an almost bezel-less finish. Now, Sony have thankfully ditched the not-so-practical foot design from last year, opting for the usual metal feet if you choose to have it on a tabletop rather than wall mounts. Now, the A95L also comes with a nice premium backlit remote. As LG's gallery TV, the G3 has primarily been designed to be wall mounted and sit flush with your wall to give picture frame style finish. Now because of this, there is no stand supplied with the G3 and you'll have to buy that separately for about £150 if you don't want it on the wall. However, if you are looking to wall mount it, then you get the flush wall mount supplied for free in the box. Now LG are still back in the magic remote, which you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of and it definitely doesn't fit the premium styling of the G3. But as an Apple TV user, I can just about go. That. Sound on a TV is a contentious subject, especially when you're spending this much money on a premium model. On one hand, if you've got the budget for these TVs, then you've probably got a separate audio system, so it's kind of irrelevant. But on the other hand, for the money that these cost, they should really offer impressive sound to match the visuals. Now, when it comes to the performance of these two TVs, it's pretty clear cut for me. The A95L offers the best sound that I've heard from TV speakers. It still wouldn't convince me to ditch my home audio setup, but it's surprisingly punchy and delivers impressive clarity. Now, the LG G3, on the other hand, unfortunately is not the best in this area, and I was a little bit disappointed by the sound performance, finding it overall kind of underwhelming with oomph missing in the bass and vocal clarity needing improvement too. The only other thing worth noting here here is that the A95L can be used as a center channel. Now I know a lot of people will want to know how these TVs compare when it comes to gaming. Now first things first, while we get four HDMI 2.1 ports on the G3 with full 4K 120 support, the A95L only offers 2.1 support on two of its four HDMI connections and one of those is the eARC port which could prove annoying if you're someone with two consoles and an Atmos soundbar. Besides that, both are very solid options for gaming with support for 4K 120Hz, ALLM and VRR. Now input lag on the Sony in-game mode is as low as 8.5 milliseconds for 4K at 120Hz, whereas the G3 is around about 5.5 milliseconds when in its game optimizer mode using boost mode. Now we've tested these TVs out with both Xbox and PS5 and they both performed really well. The A95L offers a great experience and very low input lag makes for competitive first person shooter gameplay which is further enhanced by the addition of a few picture modes under the game picture mode setting. For example, if you use the FPS game mode, it appears to lift the shadows and the blacks as well as offer a slightly colder white balance to the overall image in comparison to the standard game mode, which helps you locate enemies easier in those darker scenes. Now the overall gaming experience is smooth, enjoyable and really good fun to be honest. Now obviously the picture quality is a big part of that, especially the vibrant true to life colors, rich but well balanced contrast levels and a fantastic dynamic range which enriches the gaming experience. Testing on the LG G3 was also a great experience. It feels very responsive and the menu is nice and detailed with lots of customization available. The game optimizer menu in particular gives you a lot of adjustments. Now game mode does seem to reduce HDR brightness but it doesn't really make much of an impact as the TV is so bright anyway. The brightness levels are of course very impressive, how can you see what's going on with no crushing blacks and when you add in all of the customizations to fine tune the viewing experience to suit you, again it's another very enjoyable gaming TV. Now truthfully there's not a lot to choose from between these two models here besides the number of 2.1 ports. As highlighted at the start, while these are two flagship TVs competing to take the top spot for OLEDs in 2023, there is a big difference in price which cannot be ignored in any comparison between the two. 
For me, I could tell you that the Sony is the best, but that might not necessarily be the most practical recommendation, and you do have to factor in how much better is the performance. Now, we're looking at a 50% increase in cost, and there is categorically not a 50% increase in performance. I'd say we're pushing 10% if we're lucky. The A95R was released more recently, and so we might see it drop in price to bring the two closer in the future, but who knows what will happen price-wise over the next few months. But for right now, the LG G3 offers far greater value for money, even though, for me personally, the A95R wins on performance. Now, whether the Sony is worth the premium price tag is up to you, and how much you value having the best when it comes to image accuracy. If you take the price out of it, the A95R for me is my preferred choice due to that more detailed true to life picture accuracy. But the G3 is still a really great TV and I would completely understand why some of you guys would watch the same side by side comparisons and prefer that or just prefer the overall brightness. So getting it for over a thousand pound cheaper almost seems like a bit of a steal to me. Now really it's great to have a choice. Get a good deal on a very good TV or pay more for the best OLED picture you can get right now. Now I've seen a lot of comments around these TVs with some people bashing one or the other and the truth is neither TV is perfect but in my personal opinion they are both brilliant TVs for different reasons and one will ultimately be a better option for your needs. So I want to hear from you guys. Which is your winner? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.